Welcome to part 6 of the Best Practices for Hit Generation webinar. My name is Brian Cox. In this section I will talk about novel screening strategies, DNA encoded libraries and evolutionary techniques. Everyone is familiar with orthodox or traditional synthesis. Two molecules, here represented as A and B, and say for example a carboxylic acid and an amine, are reacted in amide bond forming conditions to form a new molecule, in this case an amide. The downside to the traditional approach is that when synthesizing a range of analogues, for example for structure activity studies, you have to carry out the same chemistry and work up every time you make a new molecule. The upside, however, is that the products are generally very straightforward to purify for all biological screening options. Turning to the combinatorial approach. Work started in this area as early as the 1960s, but was massively exploited in the 1990s, enabled in particular by advances in solid phase synthesis technology. Combinatorial chemistry allows for the synthesis of a large number of compounds in the same vessel. If we take the example of the amide formation again, a carboxylic acid, represented in the sense of this slide by, for example, A1, and a number of amines, represented by B, are combined in the appropriate stoichiometry to make a mixture of amide products. The upside here is that the time taken to generate multiple analogues for, for example, the structure activity studies we spoke about is vastly reduced, but the downside is to purify all the compounds for individual conventional testing takes considerable effort. However, various methods were developed to enable testing of the actual mixture and deconvolution strategies developed to identify the actives. These approaches were used in solution, or more often on solid phase, and for example using a split and pool strategy along with encoding tags such as amino acid triplets to identify actives. There are many texts that describe the history of uh, combinatorial chemistry uh, and they are easily found in the literature. When thinking of an ideal encoding tag, nature of course has provided the finest tag in existence, DNA. What if a combinatorial library could be made with a DNA tag? As with combinatorial chemistry and solid phase chemistry, the revolution in PCR amplification and sequencing techniques in the 2000s helped to drive the development of DNA encoded library methodology. The method enables with ease the synthesis of 10 million to a billion compounds identifying hits by affinity selection and structural deconvolution is achieved by sequencing the DNA tag. The exploration of significantly more chemical space than high throughput screening is therefore possible. What is the basic DNA encoded library method? Using a classic split and pull combinatorial strategy with DNA as the tag, library building blocks are tagged in a ligation step with their own DNA tag. These are then pooled and split into wells where a new set of building blocks are added using the same chemical transformation and a second tag is added. All the reactions are then repooled, split again and another reaction accomplished. Cycles can continue until the desired library site is produced. So at the end of the exercise the library now contains a mixture of compounds with all possible building block combinations all tagged with their own unique piece of DNA code. The library is then added to an immobilized target protein. Binding compounds are selected by affinity. A washing step removes the non-binding library members and following enrichment cycles the binders are eluted and the tag amplified by PCR and sequenced to reveal the identity 
of the actual small molecule binders, which then can be synthesized by conventional chemistry methods, and then followed by HIT confirmation in the assay. This slide outlines a start to finish success story from GSK that identified a two nanomolar epoxide hydrolase inhibitor as a HIT from a Dell library, which following optimization yielded a 27 picomolar candidate. FMOC protected amino acids are added to a piece of DNA, purified, deprotected, and tagged. Then cyanuric acid is added to form a dichlorotriazine. Then further amines and tags are added in two cycles and purified ready for use. As you know, DNA is a complex molecule which can be modified or degraded very easily in certain conditions. So to undertake DNA encoded library synthesis, the chemistry is usually undertaken in neutral or basic aqueous solvent mixtures. For a comprehensive review of chemistries applicable to DNA encoded library, please see the excellent review from workers at Vipogen. There have been a number of recent developments to increase the reaction scope for Dell synthesis. One example is using micelles. Micelle mediated reactions allow the DNA tag to remain outside of the reaction environment, which is inside the micelle. In this example, the acid catalyzed Povarov reaction, the reaction occurs within the micelle, thus protecting the tag from the harsh acidic conditions. Another recent example utilizes a dryable cationic amphiphilic solid support system to enable water sensitive reactions to be accomplished. In this slide, a variety of reactions are shown, ranging from aldol concentrations through to photochemical cycloadditions. So this technology has vastly expanded the number of reactions that can be utilized in Dell synthesis. Recently, Pagel and co-workers reported a significant innovation in the Dell field a microfluidics based system that allows a one bead, one compound, otherwise known as OBOC DEL, to be selected for activity instead of merely binding, which of course has the risk of identifying non-functional binding compounds. An OBOC library is assembled on a bifunctional tentagel rink amide support by standard split and pull methods. The small molecule library member is attached to the bead through a photocleavable linker and the DNA barcode separately attached through an orthogonal linker. The OBOC library is then loaded into a microfluidics device where each bead is contained in its own droplet at the picoliter scale. The droplet also contains all the components for the assay. The droplets flow, flow through a photoreactor in which the small molecule library members are cleaved from the support by exposure to UV light at 365 nanometers and femtomoles of now freely soluble library member at millimolar concentrations incubate with the biochemical assay. The droplets then flow through a fluorescent detector and are separated based on activity determined if a droplet had a statistically significant drop in fluorescence compared to the background population. Hits are resynthesized and their activity confirmed. When comparing this method to the standard affinity based Dell approach, the workers indeed found that a large number of inactive binders determined after resynthesis were eliminated from the hit list. This innovative technology could be expanded to many reporter assays and benefits from the fact that the selection is performed on freely soluble small molecules. Up to this point, I have spoken about DNA encoded libraries as the major method for hit finding. Now we turn our attention to an alternative method, uh, which is called phage display. 
It utilizes filamentous phages to express foreign proteins or peptides associated with variations in the gene responsible for the coat protein. The phage library is mixed with an immobilized target and following washing off of the unbound phages, the binding phages are amplified, plasmids purified and the displayed protein or peptide identified. The technology can be used to identify receptors and ligands, protein-protein interactions, the directed evolution of the proteins and the identification of peptide ligands for therapeutic targets. Another method for HIT generation is the peptide discovery platform. Here, encoded peptide libraries can be made with both natural and unnatural amino acids using a methodology such as Flexizyme, which is an in vitro evolved ribosome capable of charging any tRNA with almost any standard or non-standard amino acid with high efficiency. Peptide Discovery Translation System, or PDTS, is a cell-free, completely reconstituted, in vitro transcription translation system that allows for the template-directed ribosomal synthesis of peptides. When combined with the Flexozyme technology, peptide libraries can be made consisting of over 400 different amino acid building blocks. This allows the production of peptide libraries with almost limitless chemical diversity. Trillions of peptides in a single tube of one library. To summarize this section, encoded libraries provide quick access to large and diverse chemical space, which allows exhaustive target screening. This can be especially useful where the knowledge of the target is limited or hit rates are really low, requiring large numbers to be screened to identify hits. The methodology delivers target binders that have a vector handle where further transformations can be made to provide bifunctional molecules such as probes, degraders, etc. Despite the incredible advance that encoded libraries offer, there is a reliance on binding assays, but as discussed in the previous section, the hope of future applicability to functional assays is only just starting. With regards to applicable chemistry, most chemistries are water-based, but again, a variety of smart advances, as illustrated earlier on in this webinar, have expanded options. Finally, hip confirmation is reliant on conventional off-target DNA synthesis, which is rate limited. I hope you have found this webinar useful and you will consider these incredibly powerful techniques in your research. Thank you.